morning sisters and brothers of late i've been spending time in some random reading of some of our ancient literature as part of this uh, process i also started reading some uh, literature pertaining to the vedas after all they are considered to be the most ancient of all indian literature and also something that is considered to have come down straight as shruti or as vibrations if you really look at veda as sanskrit says comes from the ved word vid which also loosely translates in english as to see or to know if you really look at this word uh, further then the question comes in terms of what is that to see or to know obviously those who are spiritual practitioners would understand what this stands for let us come to that a little bit later when i was reading a little bit uh, deeper i also found that uh, veda also is based on three founding principles known as the sambandh habideya and prayojana sambandh loosely translated in english would stand for to know a relationship with god abideya also means to revive a relationship with god prayojana means to be established in that relation into eternity so if you really look back into the term of veda itself to see or to know and then you read them along with the three founding principles of sambandh abideya and prayojana it is quite clear that uh, the seers of the past had their eyes very clearly set on the absolute the nameless the formless the omnipresent and omnipotent called as god of course vedas were further classified and uh, when you read it further it's quite interesting that there were the four major vedas the rig yajur sama and adarvana if you look at rigveda itself it was the one to be composed first and aims at teaching how one could comfortably stay with nature more in terms of anthropology water fire sky etc were predominantly dealt in this maybe as humans evolved further we really don't know whether it's evolution or moving away from the goal humans were not really happy with sustaining the life alone they went beyond that and wanted comforts and for these comforts they wanted money hence the next level of text of veda known as the yajur veda comes about where they talk about agriculture and various methods of business and the rules and context that governs them people were happy maybe for some extent with this and as their desires and needs progress further they wanted more from life other than just food money and good living conditions supposedly this went on to let them explore music and dance which became sort of a hobby and allowed them to have some kind of a entertainment which formed the basis of sama veda and once humans went beyond this they started getting into grosser tendencies 
jealousy set in hatred grew as some people became healthier and wealthier and this led to the fight for supremacy hence you had wars warfare etc coming up and this led to the rules and uh, governing principles which were classified as the adharvana veda which dealt with wars and weapons and how to appease gods and goddesses to amass that kind of power in a way vedas tell us about the so called human evolution but those who are spiritually inclined will understand quickly that as we were progressing in this path actually speaking we were moving away from the principle for which vedas were initially enunciated that is to create the sambandh abhideya and prayojana this is where i think man started moving away in stuff seeing and knowing the highest principle of god humans deviated to start seeing and knowing lower and lower forms of accomplishments though the vedas are the oldest and extremely subtle and deep in concepts the concept of alignment with god godly thinking where even god is called by the sages as ekam sat where they were calling him or the god in neuter gender they understood the divine existence not just as a divine individual of course vedas also have two fundamental governing concepts the satya or the truth or the ritha or the eternal order which both again constitute what humans were meant to be or meant to be aligned to once we started moving away grossness started setting in and the purity of the soul became engrossed in karma or the effect of the good and bad or what we call as samskaras and in this process the transmission or pranasya prana or pranahuti as was known to the generations which were prevalent 72 generations prior to lord dasharatha started getting lost to humanity the touch with god which was almost what they said was existing during the time of the first yuga the satya yuga was lost and they started moving away and away and away where the gross tendencies were so heavy that they never knew even the existence of god in the innermost part of their being which we refer as the seat of the god or the heart i guess this is where the major shift happened instead of focusing on the absolute by using the absolute pranahuti as the way to reach him we were moving away to grosser and grosser tendencies which also gave rise to rituals and further strengthened the religious practices to such an extent that the religious practices by themselves became the begin and end all humans lost contact with the absolute almost almost till such time we had our great grandmaster coming about shri ramchandra of fatehgarh fondly known as lala ji maharaj whose sole purpose was to rekindle the pranahuti which had been lost to the humans 
by infusing the yogic energy that he was bestowed with he was able to revive the most ancient method of being in touch with god where the godly energy connected through the yogic accomplishment of the guru being transmitted to the heart of the spiritual practitioner through which the contact that was lost for generations after generations was revived and put back in order it wasn't an easy task for a simple reason once we are imbibed in deeper ritualistic concepts things which are much more easier for us to practice it became almost impossible for us to see the source as it is after all it is quite enticing to live a life of rituals where there is not much to do in terms of aligning yourself with god who is inside of you but be satisfied with lower forms of practices which would satisfy more of our ego than to feed our soul this is where the biggest differentiator happened to mankind the ability of being connected to god who is seated inside of you through the process of pranahuti would it still make an impact on the human beings when our masters looked through this they found out that even if you have to transmit to a person without clearing off the grossness that has accumulated over ages the transmission might not have the desired effect then bab ji maharaj through his various researches that he had done came about with the concept of cleaning removing the samskaric tendencies which form grossness or on the soul by cleaning off layers and layers and layers of this grossness which had accumulated over eons of time going back to our past lives or even beyond and through a process of cleaning both with the support of the spiritual practitioner through a process of daily cleaning or cleansing and with the aided support of the teacher or the guru who could in one stroke clean you of the past remove the grosser tendencies that were accumulating around the soul and then clearing off like the clouds which were covering the sun and once those layers and layers of clouds were removed for the sun to shine in its glory in a very simple way this process of cleaning followed by the transmission by the guru removed the tendencies which were there between us and god and started making us godly or god like after all that is what our masters want us to become this is one of the most engaging process if you really compare it in terms of a very simple materialistic form of living in whatever we do we look at how to get back the maximum with the minimum input any office going executive or any businessman would immediately tell you that the most successful executive or the most successful business venture is one where you invest the least but reap the maximum in that sense what heartfulness or sahaj marg has to offer has a potential which beats all human imaginations the least of inputs and the maximum of output the least of input in terms of your daily efforts in terms of the morning meditation the evening cleaning 
and the prayer which lets us be connected to the source throughout the day and with godly remembrance this is all it is needed for us to go back to what the founding purposes of vedas was sambandh abhideya and prayojana we now understand through the process of relationship the meditative relationship which creates the relationship with god to revive and rejuvenate the relationship through the process of cleaning and to be established in that relation eternally through the process of prayer and godly remembrance going back to the time of vedas physically might not be possible but thanks to the heartfulness meditation today we have a process which in the comfort of our home by barely investing about an hour a day spread over the day gives us a chance to go back what truly should be the human evolution like the people who have been lost from their homes would always look for the first opportunity to go back to their home and once they find it wisdom says it is wise to use let us now find how we can use the opportunity of heartfulness stay connected to the stores eternally and find our way back home which is what vedas want from us let us meditate do our cleaning properly be connected to the source through the prayer and godly remembrance or constant remembrance and become that shining example which everybody would want us to become specifically our guru welcome aboard to this wonderful journey thank you